like many people in information tech, I also run my own server. It's a file server, web server, Plex server, game server, backup server, all kind of server. Um, when I'm away from home, it is a very good backup system. I have my personal blog on it. And uh, when it goes down, 80% of the time I can bring it up. But there are those instances where I cannot. And those instances are instances like this. Where something has happened to the hard drives or BIOS has just decided to change settings on boot media. So in this video I'm going to show you a solution to that. If you have your own personal server this will be a very big deal for you. Got my server all prepared for the installation of this. It is a N Atten IP8000. Um, what it basically is is a remote access card that gets installed into a PCI port. It has its own power supply. It can reset and power up and down the server and it gives you full keyboard, video, mouse access remote as well as the capability of redoing the whole server remote by using virtual media. So I'm going to install it into this slot and get us going. Here's the contents of the box. You have the card. You have the VGA pass-through. Well, it's not really a pass-through. It's reading from the onboard. I have onboard video. Or you can have a video card. It's going to read from that card so I can see it remote. And then it has a USB plug-in for the virtual media. There's the software. Power supply for the card. It does not use the power from the computer's power supply. It is completely on its own. And then this is the cable that is used to reset and power up and down the computer itself. It plugs into those posts in there where uh, normally your switches on the front of the computer would be connected. Those will be disconnected and instead will be connected to this card. So now I'm going to install it. While I was installing this, I saw in the directions that you can set the case uh, power and reset buttons to link in to the A10 card, which then links to the motherboard. So you still retain uh, full front panel button control, even with this remote access card installed. All right, I've got it all installed. Uh, I got power plugged in, and off the reflection off my power supply, you can see the card has a LED light underneath here. And uh, the blue port connects to your monitor. This is an Ethernet cable. That's how you're going to get IP remote access, keyboard, video, mouse, power, reset, everything. This green port connects to a USB port that gets you the virtual media and your video. I, have, I use onboard video. This is an AMD powered um, server so it has an onboard video and that feeds back into the card and then out to the monitor. Once you have powered on the system go ahead and use the instructions about logging in to get access to the card. Well, once you do uh, you get access to this control panel. I recommend the first thing you do is to go into network and give it a static IP and then to set up the pass-through for your firewall to gain access to it remote. But the first thing I'm going to test is to see if I can power it on and off remote. So let's check. The server is off right now and I'm going to go into power management to see if I can press power on to get that server turned on. Let's see. And it turned right on. Now I'll press the same button see if it will turn off and it just turned off after you set up your static IP I definitely recommend going into user management and setting up a unique username and password for this we'll go into that in a minute we're going to go into network now when you go into the network portion you can uh, set your HTTP port 
your HTTPS port, your IKVM, your virtual media ports. I'm going to leave those as they are on my network. I'm not going to forward uh, those ports on my firewall to the internal port. Instead, I'm going to use a VPN to gain access into my network, which then I can uh, have direct access to this KVM. But you'll want to get it off of a DHCP and set a static IP, which I have, and give it DNS information. When you hit apply, make sure you hit log out, and then it's going to ask you if you want to reset. You go ahead and do that, and you re-log in. Second thing you want to do is go to user management and make sure you change the username and password. Many people leave administrator, but when someone is trying to gain access to your system it's good to have it where they have to get by two things one they have to know your username and they also have to know your password if you set it to the default of administrator then they only have to get by one gateway so i'm going to go ahead and set myself a unique um, username and password for this system and then uh, we'll be live. The next step is I'll be testing it remote using a laptop and a, a Verizon hotspot. Okay, I'm on my laptop. I am tethered using my Verizon phone sitting right there. The server is here on my left. So this laptop is not connected to the, way, to the LAN. Um, I did VPN in. So here is the A10 website and I am about to power on my server remote on the internet through a VPN connection and just turned on. Now when you're ready to remote control the uh, system that you installed the card on, I recommend if you're using Windows to use their Win client and then you can configure your server down here. Once you've done that, you can hit remote view and you get access to the server. There are some buttons down here, um, keyboard shortcut tools. The neat one is this media remote. It allows you access to the local drive, local CD-ROM from the server, or you can mount an ISO image here, however you like. And then you have uh, control delete, you have exit, and then you have numlock and so on and so forth and a help button. I went ahead and mounted the A10 uh, C-ROM that came with it, the driver CD, and as you see on the server, it came up as a drive letter. So that's pretty nice. Uh, this card will also give you the capability of completely reloading the server from scratch remote, which is fantastic. You'll have BIOS support, really support, full support as if you're sitting here with the server. The only thing you'll physically not be able to do is to unplug cables and all that stuff obviously but this is the next best thing when you're working remote so if you have one of these custom servers like I do the A10 IP8000 is a very good choice